welcome back to the Toll Tribe channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for stopping by. I'm Lorianne and I'm just one half of this channel. My husband Mike is the other half and he and I make videos documenting our journey to grow our family through a domestic infant adoption as well as family vlogs, lifestyle videos, infertility content, and adoption resource videos. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, I would love it if you'd consider subscribing to see more content from us in the future. So I feel like we haven't made an adoption resource video in a while and I wanted to sit down with you today and talk about how to fund your adoption. When Mike and I tell people that we're adopting, we're always met with a lot of positivity and often we actually hear people say, I would love to or I would have loved to adopt, but it's just so expensive I was never able to figure out how to do it. And that's really sad that people have this desire to adopt a child and grow their family through adoption, but they are always just too scared to because of that cost. And they're not lying, it is expensive. A domestic infant adoption in the US can cost you anywhere from $10,000 to $40,000, and that number could go up depending on other factors. For international adoptions, you're looking at a cost of between twenty dollars to $40,000, and that's not including travel and accommodations for when you unite with your child. Adopting from foster care or fostering to adopt is probably the least expensive way to adopt a child, but it still may cost you a few thousand dollars in legal fees. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, we were really overwhelmed with the cost of adoption when we first started looking into it. So I initially brought adoption to the table. Um, I think we told the story a bit in our Why We Chose Adoption Over Infertility video. I'll leave a card up top for you to reference that video. But I'm the one that brought adoption to the table and I was met with a lot of hesitancy from Mike at first. And one of his biggest fears surrounding it was the cost. Like, how are we gonna come up with thirty to forty thousand dollars and probably a little bit more than forty just to be on the safe side, right? Um and I didn't know. <laughs> I was like, I, I have no idea, but I know that this is what feels right, and I know that we will regret it if we don't, and we just keep waiting to see what happens. Our family isn't just going to unfold seamlessly the way so many other people's do our story is going to be different and our story to grow our family is going to take a lot of action on our part and this was just something that we had to do we had to figure it out no matter what i wanted to share a little bit about how to fund your adoption so that if you're somebody that's considering adopting and you are just terrified once you see that number and you're like no way there's no way i can do this like yes you can you will if you really want it you will figure it out and i'm going to share some things with you that could potentially help so for starters i would say if you are somebody or a couple that knows that you want to adopt at some point in your life start putting that money away as soon as you decide that it's something that you want to do. So if you're newlyweds and you know that yes, you wanna have some biological children, but maybe in the future you'd like to adopt, start putting some money aside for that now, whether that's a small percentage of your income and you just put it in an account the way you do with your 401k or whatever, or it's a jar <laughs> in your home and you just throw singles and quarters and $5 bills and whenever you have some change on you. If you're like us and you just decided that you were just gonna jump in head first and figure it out as you go, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult for you and it's going to be a little different, but again, if you really want it, you will do it, I have faith. So for those of you who are like us and you're just gonna jump into the process and figure it out as you go, you may already be paying fees because you might have started the process and you're dealing with application fees or home study fees and you're still saving up as you go, um, you're really just gonna have to be super careful with your money. Go through your budget line by line. Guess what? You're probably gonna have to do that for your home study anyway. You're gonna have to report every dollar that's coming in and how every dollar goes out. So. Before you even get to that on your home study, do that at home on your own so you can figure out how you're going to finance this. Look at all those line items. Do you really need Netflix and Hulu? I don't know, maybe not. Do you really need those gym memberships that you're probably not using? Definitely not. Like, look for things and ways for you to cut money. You're gonna feel like it's a waste of your time to try to figure out how to save $10 here, $20 there, but it's really not because all of that money adds up. So I would first suggest going through your expenses and figuring out what you don't need and how you can take that money from that and apply it to your adoption savings. Another thing I would say is that any 
money that comes in as income that's like unexpected, a tax return, maybe you like won, you know, 500 bucks at a casino or in the lottery, like any money that's coming in that's unexpected goes right into the adoption fund. Something important for you to keep in mind while you're going through paying for your adoption is that all that money is not due at once. There's gonna be fees associated with different things and they're all gonna be due at different times. Um, you might have a fee to be matched. You might have a fee for placement. You might have a fee that you pay a social worker afterwards um, for visits leading up to the finalizing of the adoption. Um, you might have to pay a lawyer. Well, you will have to pay a lawyer. You'll have to pay a lawyer. <laughs> so you're going to need legal fees, all the things, but they're not all going to be due at once. So try not to get super, super overwhelmed by that big 40,000 number because that $40,000 is going to get broken up into smaller payments over time. And there's usually like one pretty, pretty sizable payment in there. It's usually your like placement fee um, amount. And that isn't typically due until again, you're placed with your child. There are, you know, situations where you might be waiting for a year. And so you have a whole year to get that money, uh, you know, up and going. And so try not to get super, super overwhelmed. And if you feel like, you know, you're not ready to say yes to certain situations right away because that money is not there and you don't want to put yourself in a position to be scrambling, it's okay to say no until you have a comfortable savings where you feel good saying yes to situations and presenting and going forward. The first step to funding your adoption is kind of trivial. It's just to cut those unnecessary expenses from the budget, apply that money to your savings, any extra income that's coming in like overtime work, gift money, tax money, that should all be put aside for your savings. And then just sticking to a really tight budget. And it might seem like you're, you know, limiting your lifestyle for a little bit and you feel like you're not seeing the biggest return, but I promise over time that money will start to become more meaningful in your savings and you're gonna be able to put it towards something that you've really, really had your heart set on and that's becoming a parent. The next idea for helping you fund your adoption is a little bit more creative and that is to fundraise. Now there are a lot of mixed feelings about fundraising within the adoption community. There are a lot of people that feel really, really weird and uncomfortable asking other people for money. I am one of those people. Mike and I went back and forth with whether we were going to fundraise or not for a while. We ultimately decided to fundraise in a way that we both felt really comfortable with, which was actually doing a t-shirt fundraiser on Bonfire. And so Bonfire is um, a platform where you can create um, a t-shirt design um, for just about anything you wanna raise money for, um, but they do do a lot of adoption fundraisers. And you just promote that adoption t-shirt to your family and your friends on social media wherever and people buy the shirts um, you just have to sell five for the campaign to actually be printed and shipped to everybody and you get to set the pricing so you get to see how much um, will be donated to you once the shirts are sold and people can also make donations through the site as well so aside from doing a t-shirt fundraiser there are actually like hundreds of other fundraising ideas that you can do for your adoption if you've ever heard of a GoFundMe you can do one of those for adoption but they also have a site called adopt together which is like a GoFundMe but specific specifically for families that are adopting, which is really cool. And you can do that and share the link with your family and friends and they can share it and people can donate whatever they feel um, appropriate or that they can. And that money is given to you at the end of your campaign for you to put directly towards your adoption costs. I don't know if the money goes to you or if you have to link it directly to like your agency or consultant so that they know that that's what it's going there for. I didn't look into it that much. Um, but I will link it down below if you want to check it out for yourself. Other really cool fundraising ideas that I've come across in my research was a silent auction. If you have people that can offer you some really good free services or like gift cards to things, like let's say, you know, your neighbor owns a restaurant and your aunt is a hairdresser and whatever, and you can get people to donate things items, services, whatever to you for free. You can hold a silent auction somewhere and have people buy raffle tickets and kind of raffle to win those prizes and then you'll get that money at the end to put towards your adoption. I thought that one was really cool. This next tip to help you fund your adoption is a little scrappy, but it can really, really help. And that's to sell your things. Now, I know you're like, Lorianne, you already made us 
set a strict budget, eliminate unnecessary expenses, and now you want us to sell our stuff? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Because <laughs> it's going to help, and it's only stuff. And you can always buy back that stuff later if you really miss it or if you feel like you really need it. I have heard stories of people selling their second car and carpooling to work. That's extreme, but it works, right? So while I don't necessarily think maybe you should go sell your car, I mean, only if you can, I know that my husband in my situation, that wouldn't work for us. We definitely need two cars. So that, that wasn't, that wasn't ideal for us, but there were definitely things in our household that we were able to sell um, and get rid of and not miss at all. And while we're talking about selling things, you can also host an adoption garage sale where you just tell your friends and family on Facebook that you're looking for donations of things that they don't need or don't want anymore that you can sell and in a garage sale and you sell those items and all the proceeds can go towards your adoption. You're cleaning out a bunch of stuff from your own home that you don't need that's clutter and you're helping other people by removing their clutter because they're like, oh, hey, we have these two dressers we don't need. They've been sitting in our garage and you're like, sure, I'll come pick them up this week. Now these people don't have to worry about how to get rid of these dressers and they did something good because you're gonna sell those dressers and put those proceeds towards your adoption. So a lot of people do adoption garage sales where people donate the goods that you are going to sell in your garage sale and that's a great way to clean out your stuff and all of your friends stuff and make some money for your adoption. Now let's talk about grants. So if you've ever applied for college, you may have heard about applying for grants. Grants are sums of money given out by organizations to people who meet certain criteria that that organization sets. So you just fill out an application. You maybe write them a letter about who you are, your story, why you're applying for the grant money, why you deserve it. Um, and you submit that to them, possibly with a fee payment, maybe not. Um, and the organization will review all of the applications and decide who they want to award that money to. That money does not need to be paid back. It's essentially gift money. So in the world of adoption, grants exist too. And there's actually a bunch of them. You'll have to do your research. I'm gonna leave links below to websites that have rounded up some different grants that you could apply for. This way you can see what's applicable to you and what you might be interested in applying for. But there are a lot of options. What I will say in my research for grants is that a lot of them have religious stipulations. They want you to be a Christian couple or a Catholic couple. You have to be in good standing with your church, your church or your pastor or your priest has to write a letter in with your application so that the organization knows that you're in good standing. Um, and those kind of grants aren't going to be applicable to everybody. Um, not everybody has a religious affiliation. You're going to have to see what's applicable to you. There are some that are kind of open to everybody. There aren't as many that are open to everybody, but there are definitely a few. Helpusadopt.org is one of them. Um, and I will leave that link down below. Think they give priority to um, people that are applying without any children um, and people with lower incomes, but that's really it. Other than that, you can apply, anybody can apply, and you get the opportunity to kind of tell your story and why you're applying for the grant. So I think organizations like that are really, really important, especially as more and more people turn to grants for helping them fund their adoption. I think we're going to start to see more grants like that, hopefully. The last way to fund your adoption that I'm going to talk to you about is taking out a personal loan. Now, there are a lot of mixed feelings about this in the adoption community. There are a lot of people that feel like you should absolutely not go into debt for your adoption. You should 100% have that money up front and not be borrowing from anybody or any organization like a bank or a credit union. Um, but on the other side of that, I say we go into debt for a lot less important things. Our cars, our homes, our belongings, everything. We are so quick to put things on credit cards and to finance things. It's crazy that we wouldn't consider a loan for something as monumental and life-changing as growing our family. Now, I'm not saying that the minute you decide that you want to adopt, you should run out to the bank and take out a personal loan for you know a large amount of money so that you could pay for your adoption, but I do think that you should keep it in the back of your mind as a possibility for 
the last minute expenses if your match happens earlier than you thought it was going to and you just don't have those last couple of thousand dollars saved up or whatever i just don't want you to stress and think like oh i can't do this i've come this far and now i can't do it because you can there is help available to you as long as you know that you can make those payments afterwards I wouldn't get so stressed out about the fact that like you don't have everything in those last moments. I personally am okay with a loan in a situation like that where it's last minute and you need that last bit of assistance. Maybe a grant that you really thought was going to come through for you didn't and yeah you just need that last like little chunk of money or whatever. Um, then I totally support it. I wouldn't say to finance your entire adoption. That might be a lot. I mean hey if you can afford those payments afterwards then do you boo boo but I'm just saying it's an option and don't count it out because you've heard people say it's the worst thing and you should never do it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. And if you've already been through an adoption and you have more tips, tricks, and ideas on how other people can fund their own adoptions, please leave them below in the comments. I would love to hear from you. I'm sure we all would. And if you enjoyed this kind of content, please subscribe for more from us in the future. And we'll see you guys in our next video. Bye.